Tripoli EDC back again with another night video. This is the CKF520. I've been waiting quite a while for one of these. Uh, they normally come in a pouch like this along with a bunch of goodies, uh, one of which I don't know why they've included, but 10 rubles is uh, one of the goodies they included. Uh, they've also got some stickers, uh, some CKF, uh, uh, CKF patch, branded uh, microfiber cloth, and a bunch of hardware, including the pocket clip. So, as well as a card. Uh, with the name of it and, and uh, the signature of the designer. So the designer on this is uh, Philippe Georget. It came in a couple different blade steels, M390, S90V, and Dama steel. Uh, this is the M390 version. The uh, the handles come in a couple different flavors as well. There's a, a titanium, carbon fiber, G10, zir zirconium, timascus. Usually there's some combination of those. Uh, so this is the shredded carbon fiber, mad zirconium, zirconium backspacer, titanium. Uh, Liners, titanium pocket clip, and I believe titanium hardware. I could be mistaken about the hardware, though. Uh, this is something I've been waiting quite a while for. I missed the drop on the CKF 523, which was the larger version of this. This is basically a scaled-down version of the 523. Uh, and these both, the 523 and the 520, are, are based on customs by Philippe Georget. Uh, but uh, I've been waiting really a long time for this. I, I really, really wanted the... Uh, 523. I know a lot of you guys know that I like larger knives, so I was very disappointed I missed the drop on that, and then I missed the resale when everyone who wasn't satisfied with the drop rese resells. It usually happens uh, shortly after a drop is made, uh, and everything sort of resettled. By the time I got around to noticing the 523 and really wanting a piece of it, uh, it was it already sort of settled, no longer on the market. Or if it was on the market, you know, grossly overpriced from, from what it was, um, originally. So, uh, right off the bat, I'm gonna let you know this was a $580, uh, from the website. So it is quite an expensive knife, uh, and it's, but, but it's, you know, custom knife factory. It's, they're limited runs, uh, which I know some people don't love, but, you know, they're sometimes nice to have a limited run knife. Um, although it does make it harder to use, I will, I will grant that. But, uh, they do pay a little bit extra attention to it because of the li limited runs. They, uh, they, they do a really good job on fifth finish quality, all that type of stuff. Uh, so their, their knives are pretty sought after and they usually do good, uh, do collaborations that are pretty true to the custom, the original custom knife from uh, a lot of different designers. Um, this one of course is Philippe Georget. This is the front flipper uh, and the front flipping action on this is excellent. The detent is perfectly dialed in. Uh, this is pretty much drop shot. The, the pivot came a little loose on this one, I had to tighten it down. Uh, so it was drop shut out of the pouch, but uh, I had to tighten down the pivot because it was, uh, it had some blade play. Now it has zero blade play, completely rock solid. I usually am better with the front, fl front flipping, but I'm under a camera. Um, it's completely rock solid now, absolutely no, uh, no blade play in any direction. Uh, once I tighten that pivot down and you still have mostly drop shut action, but it's extremely smooth nonetheless. Uh, the, it does not feel overly front heavy, um, despite the Zerk, uh, the Zerk bolsters, the balance point is about right here, in case anyone was curious. Um, so it's a little bit, a little bit, uh, front heavy, but not too much with those bolsters. I think the Zerk backspacer does a lot to balance that out. Uh, and the steel on here, like I said, is M390, great steel. The bevel is tiny, it's a micro bevel, um, so it's just something to keep in mind on this. The logo on here is, uh, is kind of out of the way, if it's uh, the design pretty well that it's, uh, that it's located over there, it sort of blends in with everything else. The uh, maker's mark is over there, uh, pretty attractive maker's mark. The blade shape itself is excellent, a uh, nice flat grind with a crown spine. Um, it's not fully crowned, uh, it's sort of flat on top with it with a chamfer here and a chamfer here or flat flat here and a flat here I should say and it's uh, to make a, a, a semi crown spine the uh, it is a liner lock uh, like I said titanium liners the pocket clip on this uh, is a pretty nice pocket clip um, but I do have something bad to say about it which I'll get to in a minute um, the zirconium is is really really attractive. I think I liked the polished ones, which is one of the differences on this. This is matte. The 523 had polished ones. I think I liked the polished ones better, but I think the reason they changed to matte was because the polished ones were uh, scratching up pretty easily and showing a lot of wear. Uh, but zirconium is 
extremely uh, heavy. So it, you know, it's one of those uh, one of those materials that you just need to be careful with and how you distribute it through the knife. Um, I think they've done a fairly good job of it here. It's, as you can see, it's pretty thin. You don't overdo it. Uh, you got the shredded carbon fiber scales on here, and I don't think I see any major voids here on the carbon fiber, which I'm pretty happy about. Uh, and so, you know, that's great as well. The fit and finish on this is great. The steel marking is here. You can see M390204 is a serial number. The lockup on it is pretty much perfect at about uh, 33%. And you've also got some, I don't know if you can see inside of here. I don't have my flashlight with me. You'll have to take my word for it. There's some uh, lettering and everything inside of the, uh, the liners as well. Uh, so it's pretty nice. The uh, shape of the backspacer is um, is one of my favorite back backspacer shapes. You may recall one of my favorite knives overall has this same style of backspacer, which is the uh, Berg Blades Iron Wolf. And so you can see it's a very similar backspacer there and here. Now. Like I said, the detent on this is dialed in very, very well. Uh, the ergonomics on this are okay. Uh, I think they're pretty good, but they're not amazing. Uh, the way it locks in is you get your two fingers up here, gives you a decent grip back here. I have size large gloved hands, uh, and um, you know they, uh, it fits pretty well over here. The big drawback, I'll say, there's a couple of uh, drawbacks on this. One is this pick, this clip is a major hotspot for me, at least. Uh, I don't know if you can see, but the edges on the pocket clip are actually kind of sharp, uh, and they could have knocked those down a little bit, but they didn't. So, uh, you know, it's definitely a knock against the pocket clip here, and it sort of does dig into your hand right here when you try to hold it um, in any direction. And that being said, it's mostly comfortable for uh, for you know what it is. The jimping here I don't find to be effective jimping because my hand wants to rest higher up on the blade uh, than down here, but if you if you do put your thumb down there, uh, the jimping is actually quite effective. Um, it just isn't where my thumb wants to land. Uh, but for many people this, this will be where your thumb wants to land, so uh, that just could be my hand. Uh, the stop pin on this, you know, you can see is right here. It looks a little far back. I'm not sure, you know, how that'll hold up over time, um, but I don't think it's meant for hard use, so uh, I wouldn't be hard using it anyway uh, in, in any event. Another thing to keep in mind, right here, here and here, Really, really just here and here. So you've got a cut out here so that you can reach the lock bar, which is great. It gives you really easy access to the lock bar, that being or the liner lock. That being said, the uh, this is pretty sharp on both ends. It is not knocked down at all. I really wish it was, because when you're holding it, it does create a secondary hotspot. You have one hotspot here and one hotspot. It's not as much here, but right here, uh, when, you're, when your finger goes in, you can feel it digging into your fingers. So those are uh, my two major criticisms of it. Other than that, uh, it, you know, is pretty good right off the bat and um, really is pretty smooth and, and fall shutty for, uh, uh, for what it is. I'm going to go ahead and just give you a couple size comparisons, even though this really isn't a full review, just because uh, it's um, interesting to see them. So this is the uh, Benchmade Reptilian, which is actually a pretty good dead-on size comparison. This is the Chris Reeve Large and Cozy, which is a pretty similar uh, size comparison, but the 520 is a little smaller. You've got the uh, Hinderer XM18 and the Spiderco Delica. The Ontario Rat 1. And the Spiderco Para 3 and the paramilitary too. So you can see it's also a pretty, you know, decent approximation in size-wise of the paramilitary two, although it's a little bit in between the para two and the para, the paramilitary two and the para three. So that'll give you guys an idea. Uh, overall, I really like this. I'm not sure, honestly, whether it's gonna be a keeper or not, um, but uh, for now, I think I'll hold on to it, but it is, uh, it's, it's quite nice. I think eventually I'll probably want to grab one of the 523s, 
uh, and then I'll decide whether I'm going to hold on to this one uh, or that one. Probably just keep one of the two. Uh, but in the meantime, I'm going to enjoy it, and uh, thank you guys for watching. Go ahead and hit that like button, hit uh, subscribe, hit the notification bell so you get all my content, and uh, drop a comment. Let me know what you think or if you were able to pick up one of these uh, and what you think of it. Thank you so much.